Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today I have a leveling guide all the way from level 1 to 76, after which the build will be pretty much put together and then you can jump to an end game build guide. And in this case, it is going to be a rune master build, played as the mage class, and we're going to be doing the hydrahedron. And this is a lizard IRL build that he came up with, so the end game version of it will be linked in the description below, so after you've leveled, you can take off to that. I haven't played it yet so i've been wanting to put it together and i figured i'd do a leveling guide for it as well because a lot of people are always you know looking for a way to level and i've heard this one comes together relatively easily so i'm going to set us up by following the end game build guide of what we're going to want to end with and we're going to be working towards that throughout the leveling guide trying to get it to come together as early as possible and then specking the right stats the whole way through i'll break it down like i usually do in my leveling guides and that's going to be every time we open up a specialization skill slot or every time we have about five to ten passive points that have stacked up i'll stop i'll put the points in i'll show you what i'm doing with them and then show you the interactions of what has changed and where the build is headed if you're looking for some gameplay before you dive in into this that's at the very end of the video i have a bunch of gameplay or if you link on the end game build guide of lizard isles he has gameplay in his video as well but to sum it up for you you're going to be a very fast paced dashing around rune master who's going to be summoning a constrict that shoots out like a turret a bunch of fire projectiles that are going to wipe out all the enemies for you while you have tons of ward and defense thanks to flame ward and frost wall and things like that so let's go ahead and dive into it Alright, Travelers, I am now level 6. We just finished a quest for another passive point, which gives me 5 passive points, which is going to let me unlock the first skill that I want to specialize into. So first, the character sheet. Right now, we don't have very many resistances, but resistances are the first thing you want to get. So work on getting that elemental, void, and physical first. Poison and necrotic kind of come into the later chapters, but you'll run into a lot of fire, a lot of physical, and a lot of void in the first couple chapters of the game. For uh, skills... We're going to be unlocking Glacier, and we need five passive points to do it. That's why I waited. You do unlock the first specialization at four. Technically, for a level or two, we could have ran Elemental Nova, but I'm going to run Glacier, so we're going to go to our passives. We got five points. I'm going to throw all five of them into Scholar. The health is great for survivability, but really just as much extra mana as I can get right now because Glacier is going to be a very expensive skill. So back to the skills. We now unlocked the Glacier. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Click Specialize. And then the way Glacier works is it's a combo skill. So I'll, I can show you right here exactly how it works. When you use it, it's going to do a small hit, a large hit, and then a big hit far away. It's kind of delayed, but it costs a ton of mana, almost all of your mana for just one cast of it for that small, medium, and big hit. And then we have Mana Strike Unspect, and this will give us our mana back on hit. So you're going to get have to be in melee range. But to reduce that mana cost early on, we're just going to go ahead and put our first point into breaking point. This reduces that cost a little bit, in this case from 62 down to 58. But more than that, our next point, we're going to disable that largest explosion to really reduce the mana cost by 80% so that it's really cheap. We still get the first hit and the second hit, and then we can build into the second hit doing much higher damage. You get a big more modifier with three points there. It does double damage, and that'll make it feel really good within the first few points of Glacier. And that's just going to be for the early level stages of the game until we get to unlock the Hydra. Glacier is very, very powerful for leveling up. And then for the inventory, nothing special here. We have a two-hander on, cast speed, increased spell damage. For now, cold damage, but eventually we're going to switch to fire damage as the Hydra will use our stats, and it's going to be fire and spell-based. And then some uniques to keep an eye out for. If you have a Realm's Fortress Fall, this is going to be very effective, especially early on in the game. Even later, if you stack the right amount of armor, dodge, and ward, you can get quite a bit of spell damage out of it. The fundamental creator is more mid game to late game, so don't worry too much about this one. But for level 36, so about chapter 5 ish, you can get the box of Hydra, and this will really help the leveling process with Hydra. You don't have to have it, but it does help. So just some uniques to kind of keep your eye out for. And then, of course, any of those Adverts of the Erased uh, items that you have, finding those and putting those on and having some extra fixes is really helpful too. But that's going to be it for the starting point. I'll go ahead and see you guys when we spec into our second skill.
Alright, travelers, we are now level 8, which means we've unlocked our second skill to specialize into. But first, the character sheet. You can see that we're still working on resistance. I haven't got very much yet. So, we're using Flame Ward, getting Ward for most of our defense at the moment. But for skills, we got two more points for Glacier. We're going to go ahead and throw out one into Lesser Glacier, unless you really want to suffer through that mana cost. It's doable with Mana Strike, but I like to just cut it down in the beginning. And then our second point into Breaking Point, and then we'll start building into that Moderate Destruction. And this will reduce the cost down to 11 instead of it being 58 like it was. So you can cast it five times as much, which I feel like is just better than just getting that one big hit instead. And then for the second skill, for now, we're going to spec into Flame Ward, but we're going to want to do Runic Invocation as soon as we can, and that's as soon as we unlock the Mastery, which will be before, 11, uh, before level 20. So we're going to go ahead and spec into Flame Ward just for the next few levels, and our first point, we're going to put into Dilation for increased duration and reduced mana efficiency, since most of our mana is going towards Glacier. And then for passives, we got four more points. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Scholar for more mana and health. And then one point into Arcanist so that we get some Int that increases our Ward Retention as well as our damage. And then some Fire and Lightning Resist. And then for the inventory, again, nothing changed here much. You just want to look for a weapon that's got as much flat spell damage as possible on it. I should be upgrading here soon. 3 is still pretty low, but our damage will scale. And then, once again, at level 24, keep an eye out for this unique. The Grounds Fortress is going to be very powerful early on. But that's going to be it for this update. I'll see you guys at around level 14 when we spec into Runic Invocation. All right, Travelers, I am now level 15. We've picked our mastery, which means that we have access to the runic invocation. So we're going to spec into that, and we can finally start doing the Hydra, and I'm going to show you how to set that up here, although it'll be a little clunky early game, but it gets much easier later. First, the character sheet. You can see I'm still working on getting my resistance up, but again, Void, Physical, Fire, really the main things that you really want to go for at this point, and just really all of them are the main things. Don't worry about getting a lot of armor or getting a lot of block chance right off the bat. Just get your resistance is up that's going to be the main thing right off the bat and then for the inventory I'm still going with a two-handed staff so just get as much spell damage get as much elemental damage if you're still using like glacier for damage while having hydro go so that you're getting both fire and cold but fire is going to be the main thing we work into later for skills i went ahead and put three more points into moderate destruction so that our middle explosion would do basically double damage from what it's doing now and then we're going to go ahead and unspec flame word we're going to remove this and we're going to spec into runic invocation now that we have access 
with one point going into Unbridled Rune, so that when we use it and we have our construct that we make, our invocation, it's going to get additional or more damage per rune we consume. We'll be consuming three of them, so it'll get 9% per point that we put in here. We're also going to throw a point into Elemental Lore, so it gets Elemental Penetration per three Intelligence. So as we scale up our Intelligence, it'll get a more damage multiplier since it's doing that pen. And then one point into Attuned Approach so that we get some ward and mana back when we use it, as mana's really rough in the early stages as we work towards the end of the game. Then for passives, we have 11 points. I'm going to throw one more in Arcanist. Then we're going to throw five of them in Mage Flurry so that we can attack faster or cast our spells faster. And then the last five points, we're going to throw into Knowledge of Destruction for that critical strike chance and multiplier that's both for us and our Hydra. And then just to show you how to do it, the Hydra is going to be a lightning fire fire. So if you do mana strike just once, you don't have to hit enemies. You have two fireballs come out and then you just use your runic invocation and you'll get your Hydra who's going to start doing his torrent and spamming his fire projectiles. And we're going to start scaling his damage. So it's a little clunky early on. We'll make that much smoother later once we get rune bolt. But for now, that's going to get you going. So I'll see you guys at level 20 when we spec into our third skill. Alright Travelers, we are now at level 21 and we have opened up our third specialization slot. We open that up at 20, we're going to spec into it now, but first the character sheet, you can see we're slowly getting our resistances up. Again, you want to get all these to 75% first before doing any of the others. And then for gear, nothing's really changed here, you're still going for that two-handed weapon with as much spell damage as possible. At level 24, I will be switching it to the fortress, if you don't have it, it's not necessary, but this gives me a ton of flat spell damage because I'll have three active ruins, so you get 51 spell damage just for that, which is huge. But you can find staffs that have more than that mid to end game, which is pretty easy to do. But after that, just get your resistances and move speed, health, that's really all that you need. For skills, we're going to go ahead and unspec Glacier because we're no longer using it. I'm just using the Hydra 100% of the time now. So I'm going to spec into Flame Ward, and with Flame Ward, put three points into Dilation. So that it lasts longer, it's also going to cost less mana, and then one point into Infusion to give us increased fire damage while it's active. For Flame Ward, I got three more points, we're going to throw all three of them into Attuned Approach, so that we get more ward when we use it, and then we also refund a lot of that mana. The Hydra does cost quite a bit of mana. And then for the third skill, we're going to go ahead and spec into Flame Rush, but I've got to unlock it with the passive, so let's throw those eight in. They're all going to go into the Rune Master class with one in Unsealed Mana, four into Spear of Protection, and then the last of them into Arcane Focus. And I ended up putting five to Spirit Protection, so we put two in here. But we're going to cap out the Arcane Focus because we are directly casting a lot of skills. And we want to get as much ward as possible every time that we're casting them. It's going to increase your survivability. Later, we'll build into getting additional ward per rune that we have up. Because we'll have three of them active most of the time. So it's just a lot of extra ward generation for your defense. But that did unlock flame rush so for our third skill we're going to go ahead and spec into that we got four points three of them going into blazing flux to reduce the man efficiency and cooldown so we can use it more often remember using this will proc a fire glyph a gone glyph i believe it is or a raw glyph for you either one and when it procs that fire you gotta remember that that's going to go into your sequence and then the last point that i have here going to go ahead and throw into runic eclipse for that less damage taken while we're rushing and that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you guys at level 28 when we put in some more passive points and skill points into the trees.
All right, travelers, we are now level 29. We've got quite a few passives and some points for our skills to put in. So first off, the character sheet and our inventory. You can see we're still working on getting our resistances up. At this point, necrotic and physical are the two main ones I really want to get on my gear. But we're feeling really, really tanky as is. We're getting a ton of ward on cast. Soon we're going to get ward when the Hydra hits enemies, thanks to the box of Hydra. And because of that, we're going to be really, really tanky. So beyond that, for our gear, again, a two-handed staff with spell damage, increased cast speed. Remember, for the Hydra, it gets the stats on your weapon. It's literally your stats. So getting as much cast speed is going to make it fire much, much quicker. And then getting increased elemental, spell, or fire damage is going to allow it to do much more damage as well. And then just give it as much flat spell damage as possible. And then for our skills, we got five more points for Flame Ward. We're going to go ahead and throw four more of them into Infusion so that we get 250% increased fire damage, which applies to us, the Hydra. And then the last point we're going to go ahead and throw into Star Wars Defense for some extra ward granted. We got four more points for Runic Invocation. Three of them going to go into Unbridled Ruin so that we get... 12% more damage per rune. We're consuming three at a time. So this is going to have your Hydra doing just a bit more damage. And then we're going to go ahead and put one point in Rune Slinger so that it has increased cast speed when directly using a cast and gained ward equal to a portion of your current mana. This is just going to allow us to cast it a little quicker, get your Hydra out there faster, and then get a bunch of ward based on how much mana that you have. A little extra defense as well as speeding up the offense. And then for Flame Rush, we got five more points. Two of them going to go ahead and go into Rune Eclipse for that damage taken. And then we're going to go ahead and put the last three points all into Lunar Protection for that ward per second, as well as a ward burst after Flame Rush ends of a flat 180, just to give us a little extra ward coming out of it. Just a lot of ward that you're going to get with this build for that extra survivability. For passives, we got nine more points. We're going to put them all into the Rune Master class. We're going to go ahead and throw two more in Arcane Focus for that int, as well as ward gain when we directly spell cast. And then we're going to go ahead and put the rest, the other seven, all into Never Late to give us flat spell damage and critical strike chance on the next spell after we use Flame Rush. So the way you're supposed to play this build is have one skill go off to give you the lightning. In this case, we're doing Mana Strike, but eventually it will be Rune Bolt. And then you just Flame Dash ahead and channel just long enough to have have two of the fire runes come out that way you have lightning fire fire and then when you use the runic invocation at the end of that your hydra is going to benefit from this which is going and the crit chance bonus is doubled for 30 plus mana cost which the hydra does cost more than that so you're going to get 14 flat spell damage for him as well as 28 percent critical strike chance for him which should apply the whole time that he's active I meaning he's got a huge base critical strike chance from this by the time that we're done building out this whole build, he is going to have 100% crit at all times, and we're going to have lots of crit multi, so he's going to do tons and tons of damage. But that's going to be it for this. I'll see you guys at level 35 when we spec into our fourth skill. All right, travelers, we are now level 35, which means we are ready to spec into our fourth skill. But first, the character sheet, again, at this time, at this point in the story, necrotic and physical is kind of the main thing that we're looking for. But again, you want to get all of your resistances to 75% before worrying about anything else. 
for the inventory not much has changed here we just keep upping the base spell damage as soon as we find a better staff that has more this one has 34 and then of course we have cast speed and elemental damage again elemental damage fire damage or spell damage all going to be the same increases for you and then as much cast speed as possible for everything else just get int spell damage health and the resistances that you need for skills, we got two more points for Flame Ward. Going to throw them both into Barrier for less hit damage. So we take less hit damage from hits while we have it active. And we're going to have it 100% active once we get Frost Wall and start proccing it that way. Then we have two more points for Runic Invocation. And for this, we're going to throw both of them into World of Rhea. And this is going to allow us to get plus 12 spell fire damage per raw rune, which will have two of them for our Hydra combination which is going to be really nice so this will give us 24 base damage more with the hydra every time that we proc it which is going to be really nice it's going to do a little bit extra damage for us there then for flame rush we got two more points we're going to go ahead and throw both of them into the solar rush so that we have increased speed and range with it so we can go a bit further and then for the fourth skill it's going to be frost wall we're going to go ahead and turn this to lightning so we no longer have to use mana strike. So we're going to go one point into biting limit, one point into crackling barrier to turn it into a lightning. And then we're going to work towards getting flame ward to be procced every time that we pass through it. So two points into crystals of protection and then one point into boosted kickoff. And we're going to be working towards, again, that prepared wards. But this changes the setup. So now all you have to do instead of a mana strike in a dash is a frost wall in a dash. So you're going to throw the... Frost wall out there, you're going to dash in front of it, you get your combo just like that, and then you get your Hydra, which is going to be really nice. So Frost wall, and then your dash right through it. And then again, as soon as we get it set up, Frost or Flame Ward will be automatically procced every time we go through Frost wall. So you'll just constantly be getting it and going through that cycle. For passives, we got eight more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one more point into Never Late. We're going to throw two more into Arcane Focus. And then we're going to start building into the inscribed instruments. And this is going to give us more cast speed with a staff. So the rest of our points, all five of them going straight in there so that we have 20% more cast speed with the staff that we are wearing. We're going to also want to build into Ruin of Dilation so that after we use a transversal skill, which Flame Rush we're always using, we'll get 10% cast speed and move speed for a little bit from this, which will help speed us through. So we're going to be start moving faster and faster as we get these last few points here. But that's going to be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 42-ish when we put some more into the skills and the passives. travelers i am now level 43 we got some more passives and some more skill points to put in first our resistance in this area we're definitely going to want some cold resist and physical resist i have got my physical resist up but again still work towards capping all those at 75 percent after you've done that you want to start working on getting critical strike avoidance as well as some increased endurance and then armor and dodge never hurt as well for the inventory, again, just looking for that two-handed staff with as much spell damage as possible, and then get cast speed, elemental fire, or spell damage on it. That's going to be the most beneficial, and then after that, just get your resistance, get some extra health, get as many defenses as you can, including int. 
And then for the passives, we've got 10 more points. We're gonna go ahead and cap out the arcane focus. We're gonna go ahead, cap out the inscribed instruments. And then we're gonna throw the six of them into Decree of the Bountiful Ocean to increase our mana regen. This will solve any mana issues that you've been having. We do have gone runes that are usually active at most times. And eventually we're gonna be casting Rune Bolt. That'll be the fifth skill we're in. So you're gonna get double the effects of this mana regen, which will be really, really nice. And then the last point we have, we're gonna go ahead and throw into Rune of Dilation so that we get, after using a transversal skill, increased cast speed and move speed. Right now we'll only get it for one second, but as we build into that, we use Flame Rush like every four to five seconds. So four to five points in here is gonna give you 100% uptime of that buff which will be really nice. And then for the skills, we have three more points for Flame Ward. Gonna cap out that barrier for the less hit damage taken while it's active. For Runic Invocation, we've got four points, two of them coming on the unique that I have. But for the four points here, we're gonna throw two into Devastating Starfall so that we get more damage per type of rune that's being active. We have two different types that we have, so we'll get 16% more damage out of this. And then two points in Rolled of Rayot for more flat spell damage. After that, we're gonna start building into the area so that the projectiles from the Hydra hit in a larger area. This will really help you kind of have good control over mob density and just take out whole hordes of mobs at once. Then for Flame Rush, we got three more points. To make the build even more simple, we're gonna throw one point into Firely Overload and then one point into Epilogue. And this will do the Runic Invocation automatically on exit. So now all you have to do is put the Frost Wall, Flame Dash, until you have a Lightning, Fire, Fire, Runic, let go of Flame Rush and then automatically summon the Hydra. So this will make things really, really simple. The last point going into Solar Rush. And then for Frostwall, we got eight more points. We want to get that Flame Ward going, so we're going to go ahead and put two more points into Boosted Kickoff, and then one point into Prepared Wards. So every time we go through Frostwall, it will proc the Flame Ward automatically, not putting it on cooldown, so we'll just continue to get the benefits from it. And then we're going to cap out the Crystal's Protection for that Ward gain, as well as Mana gain. One point in Purifying Gate, so that it cleanses any negative ailments we have when we go through it. And then the last two points, we're going to put both of them in Protection of the Apostate, so that if any enemies go through the gate as well you'll get ward for every one of them that do and then that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 50 when we spec into the fifth skill Alright travelers, we are now level 50, which means we get to spec into our fifth skill, which in this case will be Rune Bolt. We're still working on getting all of our resistances up, we're missing some void, but we have a little bit at least of everything else. Again, capping these first is going to be the main thing. Now that I'm into the Monolith of Fate, we're going to start getting exalted items. It's going to be a lot easier to find a lot more gear, you're going to have a lot more drops, and you'll start finding the resistances that you need. And then for defense, Endurance we have a little bit of and then critical strike avoidance We're gonna start wanting to look for two to get hundred percent when you beat the first boss abomination on the first timeline There's a good chance that you'll have a 
unique chest drop. It'll be called the Woven Flesh, and that'll have 100% critical strike avoidance so that you can't be critically struck, which enemies basically do twice as much damage to you on those hits. And that will allow you just to cap it out until you find all the proper gear and all the proper slots to get it all done. For gear, nothing's really changed. Again, just go with the most spell damage you can find on a two-handed staff, and then get that increased cast speed to make your Hydra start shooting even faster. After that, you can put anything that you want on the rest of the gear to get your resistances, your health, stack int. Eventually, we're going to want to start stacking attunement, because attunement is going to give us some more damage with the Hydra. But for now, this is all you want. For idols, which you could start putting on, the only ones I'm really looking at right now are going to be the increased fire damage one, doubled if you have over 300 mana, which by the end game build guide of this, you will have over 300 max mana, especially if you're stacking attunement. But that'll be it for the gear. For the passives, we've got eight more points, all going into the rune masterclass and all eight into ancient inscriptions. This will give us more int, which gives us more damage, award retention, as well as with the bonus here. We have cooldown recovery speed per four int. So if you end up with about 80 int on this build in the end game, you'll have 20% extra cooldown, which is really going to help you flame rush a lot more often. And then for the skills, we got one more point for Flame Ward. We're going to go ahead and throw it into Shrewd Shielding for that mana efficiency. We want it to be as cheap as possible. For Runic Invocation, one more point. We're going to start building into the Glyph Carver's Dominance for that increased area of invocation. So Hydra will hit. All those projectiles will hit in a larger area. Really helps with cleaning up and targeting a lot of mobs on the Echo Maps. Single target won't change too much, but it really helps just kind of wipe the map out quicker for the echo runs and then for flame rush we're going to go ahead and start putting points into blazeborn so that the final explosion the big meteor looking hit at the end of your channeled flame rush will have increased area and damage and then we'll end up building into gas powered so that area is huge and it'll have double the chance to crit so you can actually get some good damage out of the end of that flame rush for Frostwall, we got two more points, going to go ahead and cap out the Protection of the Apostate, and then one point in Shelter of the Chief, just for that enemy health converted to Ward to get as much Ward as possible when they're running through that Frostwall. So you'll go through Frostwall, you'll get Flame Ward to pop up, that's going to give you a ton of Ward, and then any enemies that follow you will also get a ton of Ward to you. And then for the fifth and final skill, we have a Rune Bolt. For Rune Bolt, we're going to set this up so that this will be our way to make lightning projectiles it's also going to give us mana back which will be nice and then basically we're just going to start off by converting it to lightning so we're going to go with one point in arcanist one point in fuminating bolt and then we're going to get rid of the cold and the fire tag so one point in lightning spear and one point in jolting spark so now it will only have the lightning so we only have to worry about it proccing the lightning rune for us and then flame dash will do the fire and then the rest of our points are going to go into arcane restoration so there's a chance for us to gain mana back while using it and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 60 when we put some more points in
Alright, travelers, we are now level 60, still working on getting all the resist up. Our elemental's getting much higher, but we gotta work on the physical poison croc and a void. I am on the Black Sun timeline, so void resist is gonna be the main thing I want before I go and take on the boss. Still looking for just the perfect gear to throw in that, maybe something on my gloves when I get the right base type. But again, get your resistances up, that's the first thing you want. But this build is really, really tanky, especially with the amount of ward and flame ward as a defensive skill that you have constantly activated through flame flame or frost wall just gives you a ton of survivability so it hasn't been a problem yet but as we get towards empowered we definitely want to fix that again for the items that we have just get the highest base damage uh, staff that you can this one comes with a lot of spell damage and a ton of mana which is really nice you can start wearing this at level 58 and then again because of our chest piece that has the more damage per attunement point that we have for invocation with raw as the second rune which we do for the hydra we want to stack as much attunement as possible so so far on this build i've got 42 attunement which means that it's giving us 126 percent more damage so it more than doubles the damage of our hydra just from that and because we're using a staff we get 35 percent more damage with gone as the first gone being lightning raw being fire and we're doing a lightning fire fire so we've been benefit from both of those as well as plus two skills through an invocation and we're going to continue to stack up mana till we hit that 300 mana so we can get double the fire damage from a lot of our idols for skills we got two more points for flame ward going to throw them both into shrewd shielding for that extra mana efficiency with it for runic and invocation we got four more points we're going to cap out that glyph carver's dominance for the increased area and then put one point in inscribed patterns and one point in runic energy so we can start getting some runic energy stacks that'll give us more damage per stack when we do our next runic invocation in this case we'll have three stacks maximum which will give us six percent more damage it's not a ton but it's another more damage modifier which just helps you do more damage for Flame Rush, we got two more points, going to throw them both into Blazeborn. For Frostwall, we've got two more points, we're going to throw them both into Aspirant's Arrival. And that way when we pass through a Frostwall, our next Runic Invocation that we do is going to be Empowered. It makes it cost less mana, and then it's going to do more damage, 20% more damage, or Hydra. Again, we'll do 20% more damage per second the frost wall was active before we went through it. So if you wait 3 or 4 seconds and then you go through it, you can get 60-80% more damage, which is a huge more multiplier for it. And then for Rune Bolt, we've got 10 points. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Arcanist here for that cast speed. We're going to cap out the Arcane Restoration, so we have a 100% chance to gain that mana back when we use it. As a low-cost mana skill, this means that we're basically gaining 9 mana every time we use it. And then the last 6 points, we're going to throw 5 of them into Arcane Overcharge, so we have double projectiles. So we'll now have 3 projectiles instead of 1. And then the 1 point in Runic invocation allows it to auto target your projectiles go out in the cone but they can target enemies so you don't have to worry about aiming perfectly right at them and then for passives we've got 10 more points we're going to cap out the ancient inscriptions one of the next things you're definitely going to want is the rune stones here that gives you endurance and mana but then it also gives you your maximum mana gained as endurance threshold so if you've got 300 mana get 30% of that, which is almost a 100 endurance threshold, which is really going to help save you from a lot of one-shots. But the last eight points here for now, we're going to go ahead and go over to the Sorcerer and put all eight points into Calculated Destruction for eight more points of Int, but then this also gives us increased spell critical strike chance per Int. And on this build right now, we have 45 points of Int, which means that for this, per point you're getting 3%, which means that altogether... 45 times 3 gives you 135% increased critical strike chance with just those points in this node, which is huge on top of the end. So that gives you a lot more crit. Your Hydra is going to do a lot more crits more often with this. That's huge. But that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 76 for the final update when we put in the final points into the skill trees.
All right, travelers, we are now level 76. That means we get to put the final points into our skills. But first, the character sheet, still working on capping out all of the resistance. We've gotten them much higher, but again, still got a ways to go with all of them. For the other defense types, we have some endurance. We have almost capped critical strike avoidance, but again, really working towards getting all of those resistances done first and we have about a thousand health there's definitely room for more in all those categories for the inventory again just go with the most damaging two-handed staff you can get i found one with tier six cast speed getting as much cast speed as possible with as much spell damage is going to make the hydra feel much better remember this cast speed does affect how fast it fires out its projectiles so the more cast speed you can get on everything the more of an bomber it's going to become it's going to become more like a machine gun for idols again i just have increased fire damage we're still looking for some more to put in the rest of our slots we might end up putting resistances in here in the meantime just to cover them as we look for better gear we're going to continue to look for an lp fundamental as well as an lp box of hydra which could also help with getting some of those final resistances or extra crit multi for more damage and then for the skills, we've got three more points for Flame Ward. We're going to go ahead and throw all three points into Star Wars Defense for extra ward being granted every time we proc it, which is when we run through Frostwall. For Runic Invocation, three more. We're going to throw two more in the Runic Energy and one in Copied Squirrels. Three points into Flame Rush. That's going to be two more into Blazeborn and then one into Gas Powered. You've probably noticed at this point that when you Flame Rush in and you're sitting there waiting for that second Fire Rune to pop up, that then when it explodes you have that nice AoE bomb. This is going to make it much bigger, which is nice. It'll just be a little extra damage for the build. It feels good, looks cool. For Frostwall, we got three more points. We're going to cap out that Aspirant's Arrival so that you can get... Uh, up to 60% reduced mana cost for your runic invocation after you have gone through the frost wall as well as increased damage. And then the final two points that we have here, we're going to go ahead and throw both of them into the heaping gold. So if you do go more than 15 seconds without casting it, your next one will be free. Probably won't happen very often, doesn't need to happen, but just in case could be saving you some mana if you run into some mana issues. And then for Rune Bolt, we've got three more points. All three of them are going into the Rune Weaver for those Rune Weave stacks. As long as you're hitting an enemy with Rune Bolt, you'll get a Rune Weave stack. You can get increased mana regen from these mana spent gained as ward. And then, of course, it just lasts for three seconds for each stack. So if you spam Rune Weaver a bunch to get some mana back, which is what we use it for as a mana generator, you can then increase your mana regen afterwards as well as gain some extra ward. For passives, we got 16 points. We're going to throw six of them into the Spellblade. They are all going to go into Elemental Affinity for... This will give us the increased fire damage, but what's really nice is that 18 resistance that we're going to get for all the elemental types. That's going to, as you can see, get us much closer towards capping those out. And then for the next 10 points, all going into the Rune Masterclass, we're going to throw six of them into Krillian Rune Stones for that Endurance. With six points there, we're almost capped on Endurance now. We also gain Mana. 30% of our maximum as endurance threshold, so we will be much tankier when it comes to getting one shot. Shouldn't happen. And then we have four more points, which we're all going to throw into the Celestial Doom for that flat spell damage. And that's going to be it for this. We have put all the skill points in. Look for an endgame build guide, or I'll link Lizard IRL's endgame build guide for where to put the rest of your passives. He plays it a little differently. He plays the Rune Bolt as a lightning skill. I like to play it as fire, so some things will be different. I'll put down an endgame build guide eventually, but I'm going to leave you guys with some gameplay. Let me know in the comments how it went for you if you leveled it up. As always, stay safe and have a good one.